with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus appearing to the eleven, saying to them, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved." And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord walked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that attended it. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. As the saints shall bow and I am a witness of the Lord's goodness. Indeed, during the Easter season, the right thing is that we are called to be witnesses of the resurrection. We are almost now coming to the end of the Easter season. With the celebration of Pentecost next Sunday. How have I been a witness of the Lord of Resurrection? Will I feel empty now that the Lord is saying that He's ascended? Will I feel as He has been left as an orphan? Remember when the apostles, after the Lord Jesus has been taken up into heaven, and as in Mark tells us, and now sits at the right hand of God, the disciples went forth, preached everywhere, while the Lord walked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that attended it. Brothers and sisters, on this Sunday of the session of the Lord, I want to reflect to you on the theme Jesus' presence among us. Jesus' presence among us. Even if he has grown up, even if we read that ascended, the Lord Jesus remains with us. Remember when he was being prophesied that he would be born into this world, that he would descend and take the body like ours, that he would come and leave us. What was the name that was he was given? The name was Iman. And what does the man mean? The Lord with us. So how many people with us and then go away from us? And therefore, when we celebrate the ascension of the Lord, it is not a departure from us. It is a new presence that we have to understand. That he is not present with us physically like he was with the disciples, walking with them from Galilee to Judea, walking with them from Samaria to other places. No, the Lord is present. And he is present because of the way, as we read from the, our first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, what instructed the disciples? I am not leaving you as prophets. You will receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you, will remind you of the things that have taught you and even teach you more things. And the Lord Jesus, 
is present among us because he has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that we receive, we are baptized, the Holy Spirit that is filled within us during our the reception of the confirmation and continues to dwell with us in this church. Two, that he is instructing the disciples and ourselves. You shall be witnesses. You shall be my witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea and to Samaria. And therefore, it is important to know that it is me and you who are going to make the presence of Jesus to be felt because we continue to be witnesses of the Lord Jesus. Not tomorrow, but today, today. Not just today, but this very moment. Even as I stand here, even as you sit there, my brother and my sister, I should be witnessing to the risen Lord. Lazima niwe shahidi wa Yesu Christu mfuka kila wakati. Na si okesho, au kesho kutua, ni kila wakati. Na hilo ni agizo la Christu mwenyewe, ambano na nipatia ni mina wewe. Ili Christu anilee kuka kati yetu, imanuele mungu kwa mwaja nasi. Asi, inanibili mbili niwe shahidi wake kila wakati. Some of our responsories come, we responded, and some of the seven and say, God has gone up the sound of John, the Lord goes up the trumpet first. The Kiswahili uh, words for this sound are, Mungu wa mepanda tu, kwa keleza shangwe, wana, kwa mlio, kwa maragu. That when he shouts, it will be not just easy, and it is the presence of the Lord Jesus that brings these great shouts. And who is shouting? It is not the Lord. Who is bringing these great trumpet blasts? Yes, affected by the Lord, but it is us. The presence of God comes with these extraordinary, not to the shouts that are among us. The Lord has gone, God has gone up. The child of John, the Lord goes up with trumpet blast, meaning that he presence is not only seen, but is heard. Because some people may not see it, because they refuse to see the presence of God, but now they are going to hear, they are going to be in that presence. My brothers and sisters, the presence of the Lord is made possible by my witness and your witness. And St. Paul in our second reading from his letter to the Ephesians chapter 4 and from verse 1 to 13, he is inviting us, in fact, he's moving us, admonishing us, and telling us that Jesus is present in his disciples. Jesus is present in his church. Jesus is here present today. Because when we believe in the Lord Jesus, we become, as St. Paul is reminding us, one body. Of course, with different parts. And I've seen some are called to be teachers, other evangelists. But all of us are one body. We are one spirit because that spirit joins us together. So when we pray, we don't pray differently. We pray together as one because we are one spirit. We have one hope, the hope of eternity, that me and you are going to live forever with the Lord Jesus in heavenly abode. We are one Lord. We believe in one Lord. We have one faith. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are baptized in the one baptism given by one God who is Father of all. What does this mean? Let us say one baptism, one faith, one hope, one Lord, one God. It means that amongst us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who have been given the commission to receive the Holy Spirit, who are called witnesses, then there should not be any division. There should not be any separation.
separation that these are better than others, these are worse than others. No, we are all one. The Saint Paul reminded us, we all belong to Christ. Not to Peter, not to Apollos, not to Paul. We all belong together as one. That is why we are one church. Here, present, and all other faithful, wherever they are, we are one. We one and who is Jesus Christ? And as the prayer of the college invited us, that where our God head has gone with Jesus Christ, we too are going to go there. And therefore, my brother and my sister, I am called, you are called to walk in a manner worthy of your calling, worthy of my calling. How am I going to walk in a manner worthy of my calling? It is on how I witness the Lord, the risen Lord. The Gospel from St. Mark and chapter 16, 15 to 20, towards the end of the Gospel of St. Mark, Mark, we are reminded that Jesus is commanding us He's not asking us, please go. If you don't mind, go. He's telling us, go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Just like at the end of us, the priest who is bleeding, the Eucharist does not tell us, if you wish now, you can leave. No, if you want to now, you can leave. The priest says, go in peace. Our mass is It is a command to go out there and witness. And that is what the Lord Jesus is commanding us today. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he adds, those who believe and are baptized, what will happen to them? They will be saved. Remember, when you are baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. But those who refuse to believe, then they are condemned. And therefore, they should not be saved. When, why not you be? Or which time do I want to be? You might have said, since I baptized and received baptism, what was part of me? I go to church, therefore I am saved. It is not just a mere act of what I mean part of you. It is how I witness to the Lord. And the Lord Jesus in the Gospel of St. Matthew is telling me and you, my brother and my sister, these are the signs that will accompany you if you really believe baptized. If you are really going to go to witness to me, these are the signs. Number one, that you shall cast demons in my name and shall be cast out. And we have that power. We have that power. But we use it. Or we just say it's not ours. You cast out demons in my name and then we cast out. This is very important. And casting out demons, it is not just going to people who are possessed out there and you will cast out the demons. Sometimes those demons are in us. It is when I find that I am in sin and then I am inspired by the Holy Spirit, I now go at the foot of the cross of Jesus and ask for forgiveness. Yes, those are demons that are becoming me. Anything that touches my relationship with my God. Anything that comes to you with your brother or your sister, those are demons that need to be cut out. And the only person who can cut them out is Jesus. And therefore, when we go out in the name of the Lord Jesus, then we can cut them out. But we cannot do that if we ourselves are not cleansed. And how are we going to be cleansed? We are going to be cleansed by approaching the sacrament of confession. What is it that prevents me from going to the sacrament of confession and having my heart cleansed, having my spirit cleansed. In me today is what I need to ask myself. The second point, we are told that those who believe, they are speaking tongues. Not in tongues that are unintelligible to people. No, tongues that will bring people together, that will bring people to the house of God, that will persuade people it is good to be in the house of the Lord, that will persuade people it is good come and stay in the house of the Lord. Because when I am in the house of the Lord, it is much better than a thousand other days spent elsewhere. Therefore, I need to persuade people to be in the house of the Lord. Not just physically my brother or my sister, but to be there and be there in the right way. Follow the commandments. Keep all the sacraments. That is how I am going.
when you speak in tongues, by helping people to love the Lord and to love each other. The Lord is a tells us, number three, that we shall pick up serpents, serpents that are poisonous and shall not be found. Says in number four, that they shall drink deadly things, maybe the poison that shall be found. What does it mean? That when we are in the Lord Jesus, we are in His presence, He is going to protect us from the enemies that surround us. But you cannot be protected when you are not close to the Lord. You cannot put yourself in the midst of violence, hungry violence, and it's not saying, Lord, save me. But the Lord can make you be put in the presence of hungry lions and he can save you. Remember Daniel? Where was he put? In the name of hungry lions. Did they want him? No. Because the Lord wanted to show his glory and therefore the lions instead of walling him down, they were after him, praying with him. And the king, the was really a strong. Or even when he was put in fire, never burned because the Lord was taking care of him. It is not just about putting ourselves in danger and saying, God will help us. No, it is in, in our cause of spreading the gospel, of witnessing. We find ourselves in danger. We find ourselves in the presence of wolves, lions. The Lord will save us. Number five, that those who believe and are baptized and they are saved, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. There are many people who are sick physically, emotionally, and otherwise. What is our attitude towards those people? Sometimes we only see those who are sick physically. And we feel pity of them and we pray for them, yes. But those who are sick physically, they can be given medicine and they can get better, they can go to the, to the hospital, even if they require an intervention in theater, they can not that be done and they can recover. My brother and my sister, what about many who are walking current spiritual sickness, emotional sickness, depression? Do we go near them? What we say about them, leave them with them. Watch your way, keep your thing broken. Watch your way, like your And maybe that's the pastor that we are called to be close to. Lay our hands on them, not just literally, but pray with them, walk with them. Maybe they have been taken up in drugs. They have been taken up in toxic relationships. Those are the people that we are called to be close to, that we can bring them back. In the fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrated the feast of the Sunday of the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd wants all the sheep to be in one. But that's just one flock. Jesus Christ is our shepherd. And therefore, we are called to lay our hands on the sick and they will recover. Perhaps it is even me or you who is sick. Let us allow the Lord Jesus through our brothers and sisters to lay their hands on us and that we can be healed. Maybe that sickness is the one that makes you not go for confession. That sickness is the one that makes you not even to want to celebrate your marriage in church. That sickness is the one that makes you to continue living in that toxic relationship and you know it is wrong. You need to bring yourself or your brother to see you and they lay your hands on you and you will recover. And we are told when the disciples went away, they want oneness. And this was confirmed, and this confirmed was confirmed by the signs that followed them. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the gospel verse that we read, uh, the, the verse that we read before the gospel is an invitation that says, Go and make disciples of all nations, say the Lord, and I am with you always. To the cross of the age. And the Lord is going to believe us. And I am saying that today we are not just preaching the Lord who has ascended into heaven. No, we are preaching the Lord who is present among us. He is present actually, my brothers and my sisters, here in the church. He 
in our presence, in our midst. Doesn't he tell us, we are two or three? We are gathered in my name, there? Yeah, he is here. He is here present. Can you touch him? Can you feel him? Can you feel his presence? The Lord Jesus is also present here among us in the presence of the priest. The priest who brings us together. The priest who the Lord has put amongst us. The Lord is present because the priest stands in the person of Jesus. The Lord Jesus is present here among us in his word. In his holy word that we read every day. The gospel, the readings, the Lord Jesus is present among us. My dear brother and sister, the Lord Jesus is also present here among us in the sacraments and especially in the sacraments. Shortly, we shall talk about bread and wine and then with the words of Jesus pronounced by the priest, they shall become the body and the blood. Jesus Christ is present among us. But how do we witness in the presence of the Lord? Is it just by sitting and listening and by going home and saying, ah, I'm in the church. I'm in the church. I want to end my reflection with a short story. A story perhaps that might bring us to understand what it means to be a witness of the Lord Jesus, even when he has ascended into heaven and is still among us. A story is told of a blind young boy who was selling apples at a train station. And since he could not see the poor passing by, sometimes they would come and perhaps even knock his fall and be left there not knowing what to do. On this particular day, there was some HR personnel who had come from meeting that town. And they were leaving in the next train. And they were almost getting late, and therefore they came running to catch the train. And in their running, all of them came and trampled the stall of this blind young man. And their focus was not on the stall, but on the train that was leaving. And all the apples of this young blind boy started everywhere. But one who was running said, What did he do? And he turned to Anna. And he went and found this person who was trying to collect the apples. What noticed that he was blind, but helped the person to collect the apples. But he noticed that he was blind because he was not able to sort out the ones that had been badly spoiled and what that was with. He did all that and then told him, I am going to pay him. All the apples that were spoiled. He missed the train, but he helped the young boy. And when everything had been inside, and he had even paid for the spoiled apples, waiting for the next train, or he was going to be late for his meeting, this young boy called, Excuse me, sir. Are you Jesus? Are you Jesus? That is what we are called to do every day. 